am very pleased to bring on to the stage uh, Venkatraman uh, K. Hello, Venkatraman. How are you? Yeah, hello. How are you doing? Yeah. Hope you're all safe. Good. Yes, all very good. Thank you. And where are you uh, calling in from today? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm residing at Chennai, which is in India. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Good to hear it. So you will be talking about uh, demystifying common Active Directory attacks. Yeah, uh, what, that's what the topic. You, what made you uh, interested in this in the first place? Yeah, the thing I'm interested in about was red teaming assessment. And uh, when it comes to red teaming assessment, uh, the common environment you face is Windows, which is in most of the corporate and uh, I guess this is the basic stuff you need to know in, when you get to an engagement there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very good. So I'm sure plenty of audience members will be interested in this. So please bring up your slides. Um, yeah, sure. And we will get those on the screen. Sure. So I will be sharing my entire screen here uh, since uh, I have the demos to show up. If anything goes wrong, please sure to tell me. Absolutely. And we can all then pray to the demo gods. Uh, is my screen visible now? Yep. Yes, it is. You'll want to bring up the screen. That... There we go. Okay. Excellent. So, demystifying common active directory attacks. Take it away, Van Katraman. Yeah, uh, sure. So the topic for today's session would be demystifying common Active Directory attacks. So let's get to it. So the agenda for today's topic would be basics of Kerberos authentication. Technical terms like KDC, TGT, TGS tickets would be explained. Uh, I will also show a uh, demo and uh, which uh, along with the explanation of common active directory attacks like ASREP roasting attack, Kerb roasting attack, DC sync attack, DC shadow attack, golden and silver ticket attacks. There are more to uh, when you dig deep into active directory attacks, but these are the things that I would be sharing with you today. So this is just a small disclaimer here. Uh, all the demos and the explanation are uh, given here you to uh, give you a basic insight about active directory attacks that you would face in the CTF and the real world engagement. And uh, in order to understand each attack, uh, you need to dig deep into it. I have provided enough references link uh, in each attack. Uh, hope that would be helpful. So, and uh, I have configured my demo accounts in such a way that the password is set as password at one, two, three. Uh, in order to reduce the password cracking time. And uh, last one is, I love memes. If memes are too much, uh, sorry, try to enjoy it. That's it. So let's, uh, who am I? My name is Venkat Raman, goes by the cyber name Red Wolf. I'm working as a security analyst at uh, Vault Infosec. Chapter lead OS Chennai. Hold a couple of Hall of Fames. One, I love playing CTFs. Won a couple of Retim Village CTFs. Technical member of Tamil Nadu Cyber Security Council. If you have any doubts or any queries, uh, make sure you ping me over Instagram and uh, Twitter. These are my handles. So let's get to the session. So what is Kerberos authentication? Uh, in simple terms, basically it's an uh, authentication protocol which is used widely in Windows environments. And uh, it is pretty advanced and it is an alternative to NTLM, which is uh, uh, majorly used too. So the major technical terms here are KDC, which stands for Key Distribution Center, TGT, Ticket Granting Ticket, and TGS, Ticket Granting Service. So let's see what are those now. So KDC stands for Key Distribution Center. This is a place where uh, the user and the service tickets are generated upon verification of the request that is being sent from the client. So this also has components like uh, password database, authentication, cent uh, authentication center, and so on. I wouldn't be much explaining about that since I don't want to stretch it along. And uh, next comes ticket granting ticket. So it is the initial authentication where uh, the user is verified and the KDC provides a ticket here. This ticket is encrypted using the KR 
uh, be TGT accounts password, uh, which is a computer account which is handled by the domain controller itself. And uh, this TGT ticket is cached in the client machine and the request to access any other service from the client machine uses this ticket and skipping the initial step of authentication. So let, let's now move on to TDS ticket here. TGS ticket stands for uh, ticket granting service. When the user adds TGT ticket and the session key, the user requests the uh, KDC in uh, TGS. Uh, when uh, the user requests KDC to get TGS tickets, once the TGT ticket provided by the client is verified, uh, the user generates a ticket which is encrypted using the service account's password, which is TGS ticket. So. Let's see the authentication flow here. So the pre logon or the initial authentication consists of two requests. So one is the service request from the user to the KDC. In this authentication, there are only three actors here. One is the client, another one is a domain controller, which in turn means the KDC too. And another one is the service that the client is trying to access. So the first steps comes with uh, when a user generates a request to KDC, this request is encrypted using the user's password. Uh, the request is the current timestamp. Uh, and this is sent to the KDC here. Once, uh, since uh, the KDC has all the client's password, all the user's password, the request sent from the client is decrypted and the timestamp is verified here. And upon verification, the KDC generates a ticket, which is the user ticket, uh, and it is sent in the ASREP response here. So this also has the session key, which is encrypted using the user's password. So once the clients get these two things from the KDC center, user, uh, the client or the user again sends a request to the SQL service in the KDC. And upon verification here, the KDC provides the TGS response. This TGS response consists of two parts. One is the TGS ticket, which is encrypted using the service accounts password and the session key, new session key, which is always encrypted using the user's password. And with these two, the users can access the SQL service here. Uh, the user basically sends the TGS ticket here and uh, the decryption takes place here and uh, the authenticity of the uh, ticket is verified. So let's move on to our first attack. So the first attack is ASREP roasting attack. It is an attack. Basically, it focuses on the initial step of authentication. And uh, during the pre-authentication of the initial login phase, uh, the user enters the password. And this is used to encrypt the current time stamp. And it is sent to the domain controller. Once the domain controller receives it, uh, it verifies it by decrypting the key using the password and uh, the timestamp uh, timestamp is verified in order to avoid replay attacks. So, and upon verification, it generates a ticket, which is TGT ticket. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, it is encrypted using the KRB TGT's account password. It's uh, it's not too long, but it's very complex. It's hard to crack. And this KRB TGT accounts password is changed every 30 days by the domain controller itself. It's automatic process. Uh, this happens for all the computer accounts in the domain controller. And, uh, and it also sends a session key. So this session key can be decrypted offline. So when the pre-authentication is disabled in a user account, an attacker could request uh, the TGT ticket. And in response, uh, the attacker would receive TGT ticket along with the session key. From the session key, the password can be extracted. So for, in order to show the demo, I have uh, set up my Windows machine. Let me just show you my things here. Yeah. Yes. So is my screen visible? Yep. Okay. Cool. 
So let's see, this is the Active Directory Administrator Center that I have configured. So I just want to brief you about uh, certain accounts that I have configured here. One is Rashtra Mouse and uh, another one is Bradley, Brad Owen. And uh, he's a part of domain admin and he is a normal domain user. And uh, this SQL service is uh, also a part of domain admin group. Uh, this account I have created in order to perform uh, Kerberos stick attack, which I would explain it later. So let's now switch on to my attacker mission, which is the Kali. In order to perform K ASREP roasting attack, I will be using Impact script. You can also use PowerShell scripts here. Uh, there are many tools to it, uh, but for demo, I will be using Impact here. So, so the Impact script that I will be using here is get np users and let's see the structure of mpacket script here almost all of the mpacket scripts has default arguments which is the domain name and the username uh, if you have added the domain controller ip address in your virtual host list you don't need to mention this uh, i mean you don't need to explicitly mention the domain controller's ip here if you haven't then you need to mention it explicitly. So let's try to get this attack done. So my domain name is htb.local. I am going to oh, retrieve the hash for Rasta mouse who has Kerberos pre-authentication disabled. So my IP of the domain controller is 102. OK, so I have retrieved the response here, which is the Kerberos uh, session key. And this can be decrypted offline. Before decrypting it, I just want to mention uh, where this attacks, uh, where this attack can be useful. Uh, this probably you won't be able to see in a real world engagement, whereas in a CTF or in uh, solving hack the box missions or uh, in a, uh, a red team uh, uh, thing, you would be able to, uh, when you have certain usernames or the employee names and uh, you can generate a list of username possible username and you can uh, add this flag you add them using this flag and it would check whether the usernames that you have added have Kerberos pre-authentication disabled so let's try to crack it so let me copy it I will be saving it in yes rep so let's save it. So I will be using Hashcat to crack this hash. Of course, you can use uh, John too, but I feel comfortable using Hashcat. So, hi there. Can you zoom in on your screen somewhat, please? Sure. Uh, Unfortunately, we can't see much. <laughs> Okay, okay. Let me just... Uh... Okay, I'm not sure about... Okay, if it's if it's not possible, then uh, so be it. But uh... yeah, uh, let me just check it out once again. <clears throat> I'm not sure why this isn't applying. Okay, uh, sorry for okay, the... Okay, it is what it is. Okay, then, then uh, yeah, I guess we'll just have to carry on. And uh, everybody squint. Sure. <laughs> so... Okay, uh, so here I have specified the domain name here. So I know that... Uh, okay, this is a hash 
kind of thing so we'll see which module we would be using it here uh we know that this is an asrep response here and uh, this is encrypted type is 23 so this is a module that we would be using it here so okay and uh rep and i would be using the common word list rock you hope you are familiar with it mm, let's see so in the interim let's switch on to our domain controller and let me show you where this has been misconfigured so let's go to properties here and uh, in the properties we can see other options so in this this has been explicitly set do not require kerberos pre authentication is checked here so this is the uh, key thing which is uh, which is responsible for retrieving the hash uh, kerberos hash in our attackers mission so yes i guess the hash is cracked so i have an client machine which is set up here so this is a client machine this is connected to an ad and this client machine's uh, administrator is rasta mouse which is r mouse so i will try to uh, execute uh, commands over it uh, for this one time and uh, i wouldn't be cracking the hashes uh, in all the attacks right now so this is just an show and demo so i will be using ps exec here of course you can use uh, impact tools like smb exec or evil winarm if winarm port is enabled in the target machine so let's see so again this has a format here local uh, domain name and r mouse at the client machine which you are going to target here so the ip address is 128 and the domain controller's ip address is 192 0.102 let's fire it up and this is asking for password 123 and the, i have entered the password that we have got earlier and we have got it so so we have got as Uh, the administrator of the system so this is happened only because th uh, the user r mouse is an local administrator in the client machine which is 192.168.0.178 so let's switch over to our presentation and yep this is the screenshot that i showed and uh, the catch thing here is that it is nearly impossible to find this misconfiguration on a real world engagement whereas uh, uh, when you find it uh, you can find it over uh, hack the box missions or uh, active directory labs uh, which would be helpful i guess it is one of the basic attack that you need to know uh, when it comes to red team assessments so i have attached all the possible demos here i mean uh, the attacks that i would be performing i have uh, captured as a screen uh, as a video and uh, attached to my presentation here uh, the thing is i am running three vms here i don't know when they would uh, mess up so uh, in order to be more safe i have uh, added the videos here when i share my presentation hope you would check it out uh, you can ask questions too so this is uh, the screenshot where i have uh, wireshark listening in my ethernet and uh, uh, firing the asrp roasting attack here so this is the request that is being uh, gone to the kdc here so without entering the password uh, the asrp response is generated and this is the tgt ticket and uh, as i mentioned earlier this cannot be cracked uh, since it's encrypted using krb tgt's account password and this is the session key which can be brute forced online and kindly make a note that uh, this attack i mean uh, uh, 
this attack possibly retrieves uh, different hashes whenever you uh, 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 try it out the thing here is that uh, one of the key that is being encrypted is uh, the current uh, the timestamp so uh, it's uh, it's nature that the hashes would vary so let's when pre authentication is enabled uh, the it throws an error like pre auth is required from the kdc this is the error and uh, this would be uh, seeing in when you run that in packet script so these are some cool references hope you check it out let's now move on to the next attack which is uh, kerb roasting attack so kerb roasting attack uh, comes into play when you have uh, certain credentials of the domain user so it basically what it does is uh, it harvest the password hashes of the account which has spn values or the service principal name values uh, set in it so this misconfiguration usually takes place when an user account is configured as a service account uh, through adding the spn values by the domain administrator so usually uh, uh, without uh, generally what happens is that when an authenticated user in the dc request uh, to access a service the tgs ticket is generated uh, by the kdc and given to him so this tg uh s ticket comes along with a uh, uh, uh this tgs ticket is encrypted using the service account's password and it comes along with the session key which is encrypted using the user's password so when this is configured by an administrator or by an person so so the password for the service account is uh, generally seem to be very weak and it can be brute force whereas when it is configured by the domain controller itself it's hard to crack so that is catch here so this is the image that is uh, uh, where the misconfiguration is this is the user account sql service and this is the service principal name and uh, this is the service that has been configured here so let's see the demo here so let's exit the shell uh again i will be using an impacket script uh, which is get users np uh htb.lo i am specifying the domain name here i know that rasta mouse is the user uh, name whose credential i have and he is a part of domain user i am specifying it the password explicitly and uh, let me give the the my controllers ip address again and uh, i will be giving an extra thing called as target ip which is required to extract the service accounts uh, hash one zero two okay i guess it's not required yep so it uh, this retrieves the uh, spn values wh whose account has been set so we'll try to request the uh, tgs ticket here okay i guess there is some issue with my time okay i expected this mm. let me just uh, restart my vm here i have attached a video here uh, so let's play it i said right something might go wrong this is the thing so yep yeah so this is the thing this is a phase uh, phase we were in so let me just give this i am giving a command uh, request and i am entering the password here 
uh in previous condition i didn't uh, i didn't i i was not prompted to enter the password because uh i have explicitly mentioned it here so this didn't come so once this has been given uh, the krbtgt hash has been generated the thing that was going wrong here is that uh the time difference between the domain controller and my kali machine is too high and uh, uh, the domain controller thinks that it's an replay attack uh that's the thing uh, probably if this issue is resolved i would try to show this demo uh let's go back here so this is the place where the misconfiguration is uh, happened uh, services uh window this is the place window services and uh, sql service has an authentication or the log on of the domain user sql svc at http.local and the password has been given here so this service uses the domain users account so this is the reason we were able to get the tgs ticket so this would be the basic flow uh, again the wire start flow here and uh, this is the tgs response uh, tgs ticket and uh, hope you could see it here the hashes start with the same thing and this is the session key new session key and uh, we don't need to bother it i guess so let's uh, this are some references uh, let's try to fire the command again I guess there won't be any issue now. Okay, the time has changed. Yep. Hmm. I guess I won't be able to use my Kali machine here at the time. Hmm. Okay, it's look good. Okay. i am specifying the password here itself so that i don't get a prompt mm yep okay Oh lol I don't know what's this thing is happening <laughs> yeah i have retrieved the hash successfully here so let's copy this and let's crack it here mm, i haven't copied it completely so again let's see the module which we would use in cracking the hash so this is an tgs response and uh, we are going to crack tgt a tgs ticket so let's see so i guess this would be the module that we would be using 13 hundred i guess and uh, hash this is the password oh i again i will be using word list rock you here and uh, the note i need to mention here is that uh, usually all the service accounts would be a part a uh, part of domain admin uh, um, so, uh, it is the most co common scenario where server account has an domain administrator privilege so that they can access uh, all the uh, things uh, in the service so that's the thing here so we have retrieved the hash successfully now so let's move on to the next attack so this is an called as dc sync attack so dc sync attack is probably the last part of the engagement or last part of privilege escalation usually so when you have 
uh, the domain administrator credentials or uh, an user credential who is part of the domain admin or the enterprise admin uh, then you would have an access or permission uh, which is replicating changes uh, directory changes all or replicating directory changes so this attack basically is a credential dumping attack which stimulates the behavior of replication of domain controller and uh, this what it, uh, the attack flow would be this uh, compromise an attack which has a uh, compromise an account which has a permission of replicating directory changes all or replicating directory changes and request the domain controller for replication via get nc changes and the domain controller responds with the replication process after verifying the request and the credentials are being dumped so i will be using secrets dot dump uh, secrets dumps dot py so uh, when the replication process is initiated uh, the secrets dumps only request for the files or the credential which is present in and uh, 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 the uh, which is present in the credential database which is ntds uh, dot dit file so all the same database so let's move on to the demo now so i will be using secrets dump and uh, at HTB dot okay let me I guess I would be prompted to enter the password uh, okay name I need to mention target IP here since I'm using service account okay Okay. Yep. This has usually happens here. So we are able to dump the NTLM hashes for all the accounts present in the domain controller. This includes uh, the domain admins, uh, the computer accounts. Uh, we are able to dump the accounts like uh, our Rasta mouse NTLM hash, SQL service NTLM hash. Uh, we also retrieve the KRBTGT accounts password uh, NTLM hash. Uh, let me just copy and and note the NTLM hash of user administrator and KRBTGT, which I would be later using it in generating golden and silver ticket. Uh, let me just cross verify it. Okay, so this is all about DC sync attack. Uh, let's move on to my presentation here. So this is the thing. Yep. Uh, here are the references. Hope you check it out. So now let's move on to a similar attack, which is uh, DC shadow attack. Uh, when it comes to DC shadow attack, the key difference between DC sync and DC shadow is that uh, DC sync only dumps the credentials uh, of the computer and the user account present in the domain or the domain controller. When it comes to DC shadow attack, uh, this would be able to modify the objects and the attributes of the object of the domain controller via same replication, uh, uh, via leveraging the replication process so dc shadow attack basically basically sets a rogue domain controller on the network and uh, it pushes the changes to the original domain controller so you would make changes to the original uh, domain controller via the rogue domain controller that you have set up so let's see the process flow here 
so first thing you need to have the there are two requirements here one is the credentials of an user who is a part of domain admin and another one is a system privilege access to uh, one of the machine in present in the ad environment and uh, i would be using mimikatz uh, to perform this attack uh, uh, you can uh, uh, upload the mimikatz on the machine and start mimikatz with administrator privilege on two shells uh, one is for creating the rogue domain controller and setting up the changes in it and uh, another one is for pushing this changes to the original domain controller i have went the commands here and this is the demo file hope uh, you will check it out so let's now move on to my client machine so this is the client machine and uh, let me just power cmd so i have logged in as bowen who is a part of domain admin and so this is the sid of bowen so let's now fire up the mimicat thing here so of course uh, in uh, in an engagement on an thing what you would do is you would compromise the client and you would use any um, uh, script like a uh, tool like evil venarum or smb exec or ps exec here so let let me run this as an administrator i will also have another shell here so let's check whether the process uh, the dll files are imported here uh, we have the drivers imported successfully let's also check whether the token is as system so yep so let's generate the rogue domain controller here so the object that i would be changing here is rastra mouse and uh, the attribute i would be changing here is description okay and the value here would be v sites uh, i need to give it in quotes so that's it let's fire it up yep so we have created it so this is waiting for the push command that we need to give it so before uh, we need to uh, as i said earlier we need to have an uh, uh, domain admin access here right so we need to uh, impersonate the token here so what we'll do is we'll do that impersonation first yep so i would be using sqe you are same module here and uh, i would be impersonating as administrator in order to not to take any chance and the domain here is htb.local and the ntlm hash for administrator is i have copied it and uh, let me paste it and uh, we are going to impersonate it okay i have misspelled it i have added an extra s here oh lol okay so uh, the token impersonation has been successful i guess let's see to by firing the command to a uh, token who am i so hope yep so uh, we'll now do the push here yeah this has been reflected i guess let's go to the domain control and see it so yeah this is the thing uh, so 
the key difference is that it, uh, the DC shadow attack allows you to uh, modify the domain objects uh, uh, and the attributes of the domain objects, which would be helpful in making persistent connection or uh, setting up a backdoor to your C2 framework. So this is the image and yep. Okay, these are some rough references. Let's now move on to golden ticket. So golden ticket attack is basically uh, is uh, as the name specifies it. It provides you complete and in, uh, unlimited access over the domain uh, controller. An attacker who has a, the attacker who has a uh, credentials of KRB TGT account or the NTLM hash of KRB TGT account can frame the TGT ticket and access any service in the AD. So using uh, the possible ways of exploiting this is issuing tickets for users that don't exist, adding users to the uh, adding users to group in which they don't belong, or issuing tickets with the lifetime uh, access. Or uh, I mean, uh, the expiry expire time of TGT ticket can be set to 10 years or so. So the requirements in order to perform this attack are domain name domain SID and the KRB TGT accounts NTLM hash and the user that you are going to impersonate. So again, I will be using my client here. So let's close this. Uh, let's fire it up again. I will be running it as administrator. So we need the domains SID here, right? So this is the SID of users account. One of its part that is uh, till this, this is the SID of domain and this is the RID of the user account Bowen. So what we'll do is we'll use Kerberos module here, golden and we are going to impersonate our administrator and we'll be using the domain hdb.local and the SID is and KRV TGT I have captured the hash here so I will be generating a token with administrator privilege, which comes at ID 500, right? So let's, yeah, the ticket is saved here. So this is the ticket. And, uh, we'll use this. So in order to use this, you need to import it. So I will be importing it using this command. Okay. So let's fire up command from from this. So this is the, I guess, uh, the token, uh, the ticket has been imported, I guess. So let's list the tickets that are present in this uh, domain. So yeah, we have administrator here. So let's try to do uh, an attack where the administrator has privilege. So I will be trying to uh, load the C directory of domain controller to this client machine as a shared folder here. Let's give I and So this is the thing here, I guess command has been successful. Let's try to list it out. So these are the directories of C drive in my domain controller. So this is the thing. Uh, so let's now move on to, yeah, I have captured the demo here. So. I guess we lag behind the time. So let's quickly see what is silver ticket attack. 
silver ticket attack is similar to golden ticket the key difference is that uh, golden ticket ticket provides you an unlimited access whereas the silver ticket provides you an access to specific services uh, once you have compromised the password for an service account or the password hash for the service account you would be able to generate tgs tickets uh, for every or for any users present in the domain in order to access the service so its scope is limited but it is very stealth and easily achievable than golden ticket the requirements of to perform this attack is sid of uh, the user you are trying to generate and uh, the domain name the target service and the username and the ntlm hash for the service account so let's go here i will just kill all the kerberos uh, list here i have kerberos purge would do it i have deleted all the kerberos tickets here so let's try to generate the silver ticket here i would be using the golden module itself but instead of specifying the sid of entire domain i would specify the entire uh, sid of the user and i would specify uh, the account's password along with service name and uh, the target here so let's provide the sid here I guess I have the SID here. Yep. The domain is HTB dot local. Or uh, the user is Bowen. So, ah, uh, Bowen stands for Brad Bowen, which is the first. Ah, uh, I have took the initial letter of first name. and the uh, complete name of last so this is usually the naming convention present in your uh, ad i mean uh, when it comes to active directory so let's provide the target here which is and uh, let's provide the service here let's also provide um uh, the password hash so since the password hash is same for all the things which is password at 1 2 3 uh the password hash wouldn't vary so let's yep the ticket has been saved i guess let's import it again using kerberos pdt and uh, oh i have to specify the file uh i have imported it successfully let's run command here so let's list the things so i have yeah hope you could see that the service ticket i have got it for sql svc so this is it and this is the image screenshot the references uh yeah this is it uh thank you let me show presenting my screen thank you very much for countryman you brought that in just in time during extended pot play as well so just in time uh looks like you didn't pray to the demo gods quite so hard as uh, as you needed to but uh, <laughs> yeah i guess the cl- cl- timing got screwed up uh, yeah. so i had to restart my ca- attacker mission here <laughs> so things mess up oh uh, it's not a real sorry for that if it is a uh... messes up ah yeah thank <laughs> so, you for understanding no but no no thank you very much indeed and in the absence of a real applause you get my ver-